And I thought, if you work with horses like this, you've got to be able to work with dogs. It took a lot of research mm. on my part. Well, listen, Jim, let's talk about practical applications, because your second book here yeah. is about applying your philosophy. That's right. You know, when you get a new dog, or also if you've got a dog that's got problems. Yeah. And we've got a couple of clips here, which I think will help us illustrate it. Now, the first one is Jack, uh, Zach, Zach, sorry. Yeah who's a German Shepherd dog, who hates police uniforms, and unfortunately right. his owner was a copper. That's a right. Bit of a problem. So let's have a wee look at Zach. Zach, give up. In. In. In, Zach. Yeah, as you can see, he's Hello? not right. Uh... Hello, hey. Hey, come on. Now, is he, is he reacting like that to your... to your uniform, or to me? To uniform. It's the uniform. If you want to go along behind me, then you'll... You'll see he's just wanting to get out at where. Yeah, he can't get it back. And he can't at get it back at City. And that's what he's after doing, he's just getting out he's at where. He's just wanting out at where. He's going really low, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's carrying. See, that's the reaction to you, is that one. Yeah, he doesn't like me, does he? Yeah. Apart from the barking, he's like yeah. pretending not yeah. to be here, isn't he? Yeah, he thinks go. if he goes any lower, no, he's trying to get it back up there now. Oh. Not a happy bunny at all. No, you see. What was All going through Zach's head? What, what he was thinking was, I don't like this, I want to put as much distance between that um, and me, myself as possible. Right. And, you know, German Shepherd, traditionally seen as an aggressive dog, and you see a dog behaving like that, you've got this fear, and out of fear comes the aggression. Right. Now, if you look at her face, there's no fear. She knows where she stands. She has nothing to fear because I'm her leader of her choosing and I make decisions. Right, now, what, now this is something that I know mm -hmm. that is, is very kind of core to your whole philosophy yeah. about who is the leader. Explain why that's so important. It's important because a dog, if a dog is decision making in our society, potentially dangerous. Because, you know, we can say the light-hearted stuff of the dog put, believing its leader pulling on the lead, straightforward. You know, where should the leader be but up front? Mm -hmm. People let the dog off, where's the dog gone? You know, believes it's got to find new hunting grounds, but you get a dog that sees people and doesn't like it, mm -hmm. and other people are stop it and shouting at the dog, then the dog thinks, I'm in trouble here, I'm getting hurt because you're around, go away, and they will attack. Right. And that's what can lead to. Now, if you have a dog, because they can't understand our world, mm -hmm. I can't. Mm. They can't understand our language. They don't understand, believe it or not, microwaves, televisions, cars. They don't understand those. We just assume they do. So when you cut all of that out and you say, OK, what do you understand? Hierarchy. They know that to cooperate with a leader, but the leader they have to choose. You cannot bully somebody into accepting you as leader. Right. You look at slaves. Slavery. And you have got to be leader. The owner has to be you the must, leader. But you must have them elect you into that. You right. cannot force your will. So what did you do in, in Zach's case? Then? In Zach's case, what we did, I said to him, right, let's have a, we, we got the change of relationship. When you come in, you ignore the dog, so the dog settles down, then call it to you, showing that you can come and go, and the dog must take that, and then come when it's called nicely. When people came to the door, thank the dog, don't shout. When she barks, let me know somebody, I say, good girl. She knows she's done her part. Right. Thank her. It's, it's a subtlety. It's many, many subtle things that change the dog's mind. Right. And when you do that successfully, the dog can give up this awful decision-making and fear. Right. And that's right. what happened with Zach. Well, we've got another example, which is a fascinating one. You can talk us through this one, Jan. Mm -hmm. This is Charlie the Spaniel, yeah. who has developed a habit for some reason of... Well, he's scared of his own shadow, literally. That's right. He sort of licks the walls and stuff. Let's yeah. have a look at Charlie. Now, Charlie here, this all, obviously started off as a game. Somebody saw the dog licking and doing that and made something of it. Now, it's very easy with a dog to make something of nothing. If you, anybody's got a dog, go over and just scratch a piece of the carpet. Before mm. long, the dog's like, what's that, what's that? Mm. So if a dog does that and you say, stop it, stop it, the dog becomes more and more and more neurotic. Add to that, a dog that believes its leader and cannot cope with its leadership, it's a stressed out dog, a very, very sad little dog, and it's a Springer Spaniel seen as being neurotic. Right. Well, this is an English Springer Spaniel perceived mm -hmm. to be neurotic. So you've got here the dogs that are perceived as being aggressive and neurotic. No. No. This is what, have to that's be. what humans make them. So what do you do with Charlie then? In exactly that the same again. Get the dog to give up the job of leader, first of all. That's always the core of it. Right. Change the way you treat the dog. No, no fear, no pain. You don't even raise your voice, let alone your hand. So there's absolutely no aggression. You silently take over the job of leader. And every time he went over to anything like that he was licking, just take hold of him and bring him back to the owner and sit there. Right. And when he totally relaxed, let him go. Mm -hmm. Don't speak. Till then the dog starts to think, why am I doing this? That's what you want. You see, who's controlling right. these dogs? It's not me. They are. 
This is not about controlling the dog, it's making the dog make the right decision. So I just took him away from the wall, sat there, and when he relaxed, let him go. Mm. So it's really, it's being the boss, but not a big shouty boss. Oh, no, they just... don't believe in that. <laughs> they don't believe in you if you're a big shouty boss. They only believe in a strong, silent one, which mm. we know. Yeah. We know all these things, but have turned out our backs on them mm. in the belief that canine wants you to go wee all the time. You know, funnily enough, it doesn't sound as if doggy psychology is that different from human psychology at the end of the day anyway, because that's probably what we respond to too, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. We respond yeah. to kindness, mm. but we also respond to, we like to know where we stand. Yeah. And that's what you get when you do yeah. this. Well, you just stand where you are, <laughs> sit where you are. Um, well, Jan Fennell for the moment, which is going back. Jan, thank you very much. Thank you. Jan is sticking with us because she's going to take your calls into phone in. So if you've got a badly behaved beagle or a disobedient Doberman, give us a call on the usual number 020-7691-5000 or you can email us at openhouse at channel5.co.uk. And we'll be dealing with all of your pet hates at the end of the programme.